Hello everyone and welcome back to another arbitrary ranking video. Recently we've been ranking the two part episodes and so continuing with this trend we come to Deep Space Nine. Now obviously there are quite a few caveats with ranking two parters from DS9. DS9 was much more serialized as a show and so it could be argued this series has not just several two parters but three parters, four parters and even a final ten parter which ends the series. To whittle it all down though, I've decided to try and make the scope of this list a little narrower. I'm choosing to leave Emissary and Way of the Warrior off this list because, just like with Encounter at Farpoint and All Good Things, while they are sometimes broadcast in two parts, they were made with the intention of being single feature length episodes. I've also chosen to leave off the final ten episodes of Penumbra to What You Leave Behind, as well as the beginning of Season 6, A Time to Stand Up to Battle Lines. These are more like ongoing arcs as opposed to a single plot split across multiple episodes. Despite all of that though, there is still a three-parter on this list, so I'm still cheating a wee bit. Whether you agree with these caveats or not is up to you, and I'd be perfectly happy to discuss the episodes I excluded from this list, as well as those included in the comments below. With all that out the way, we can jump in, but first... This video is sponsored by my gaming channel, SideQuest. Up until recently, it's really just been a fun hobby, but recently we've committed to really growing the channel. Our main two series right now are deep dives, video essays, in-depth reviews, and other analytical videos on our favourite, or indeed least favourite games, and licensed game Hell, a gameplay series where we sit down and have a laugh playing games exclusively licensed from movies and TV shows. We upload something new every two weeks, alternating between the two series. It would really mean a great deal if you could show the same support to SideQuest as you've done on this channel. Head over by clicking the link down below to check out our videos, as well as subscribing so you can stay up to date with all the new uploads. Thanks again for supporting what I do, and with this promo out of the way, let's get stuck into the video you came to see. Now, I'm cheating right away here with Homecoming, The Circle, and The Siege. Now, just as before, I should say I don't think any of these episodes are bad, I think all of them are good. It's just that some are stronger than others. This is the arc which really put DS9 on the map, the first ever three-part episode in Star Trek. In a way, this three-parter is like the trial run for what DS9 would later become. Long-running stories, huge ensemble casts, the main characters being forced to make morally difficult choices, etc. The only reason I rank this one last is because everything the three-parter does is done better later in the show. But even so, this really kicks season two off with a bang. Above that, we have Image in the Sand and Shadows and Symbols. Following up the shocking conclusion to Season 6 is by no means an easy task, but Image in the Sand, Shadows and Symbols does a fine job of getting us going with Season 7. The mystery surrounding Sisko and his search for another Bajoran orb is compelling enough, but the true highlight is Kira's standoff with the Romulans back at DS9. Seeing a whole squadron of Romulan warbirds bearing down on a loose collection of Bajoran trade ships and fighters is nail-biting to say the least. I feel like Esri Dax does get lost in the shuffle though. She's a great character who does get her time to shine later on, but in this episode she pretty much shows up and then does not much of anything. It's a little odd. Other than that though, this is solid DS9. Next on the list is The Marquis. The Marquis is one of those instances where the DS9 writing team really went above and beyond the call of duty. The episode basically only exists to set up The Marquis for Voyager, and yet it's one of the best episodes of Season 2. This is really the first time the morality of the Federation and Starfleet is called into question, where we as an audience know our main characters are on the right side legally, but perhaps not ethically. On top of that, it's really DS9 doing what it does best, with plenty of character-rich scenes, unexpected plot twists and turns, and impressive action. The main reason I chose this above the Circle Free parter is the terrific antagonist Hudson. It's almost like the prototype for Sisko and Eddington, and I really wish we saw Hudson come back at some point. Above that we have The Search. This is an episode which really hinges on its brilliant twist. While the whole virtual reality thing does seem like a bit of a cop-out initially, the ramifications for Odo's character and the larger Star Trek universe are massive. The question of where Odo came from and who his people are is answered almost in a mean way. He finds his people only to be cut off from them. It takes what seemed like some simple character backstory work and thrusts it into the main story arc of the entire series. It's just as thrilling as intense as the end of Season 2's The Gem Hadar, but far more character-rich and dramatic. It's one hell of a way to introduce the Dominion properly. 
Which is why it's fitting to come to our next pick, In Purgatory's Shadow by Inferno's Light. Having set such a high bar for itself, this two-parter really messes with your expectations in such an engrossing way. By this point, we knew about the Dominion threat for quite some time, and having seen how epic the show could get with the Klingon arc, it's easy to believe you as a viewer know where this two-parter is going. We have this big galactic threat on its way and the major powers of the Alpha Quadrant massing around the station for an all-or-nothing battle, although what we end up getting is much smaller in scale, it somehow feels just as big. Worf going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ikatika, Bashir being outed as a changeling, and the mother of all twists, Gul Dukat switching sides to take over Cardassia and secure his place as the best villain in Star Trek history. Although that all-or-nothing battle would come, laying in these extra twists raised the stakes higher than we could ever have imagined. However, next up is a much more intimate story with past tense. Now this next statement may be shock, gasp, political, but I always find it deeply troubling how relevant this episode is so many years after its release. While the time travel antics and hostage situation are typical Star Trek, what makes it quintessential Star Trek is the message. This is an episode which really cuts to the heart of so many seemingly complex issues. The failure of empathy. When certain people are just abandoned, left to suffer due to no fault of their own. It's an episode which is bristling with righteous anger, almost as if the writers are leaping through the screen to beg the viewer to take their message to heart. And it's that substance which makes this one of the most powerful and moving Star Trek episodes to this day. Above that, we have Improbable Cause and the Die is Cast. Three words make this episode great. Odo and Garrick. As I said before in my DS9 retrospective, pairing up an uncompromising detective with a habitual liar is the perfect odd couple. Just two actors playing rich characters and fantastic dialogue to sink their teeth into. But while a lot of their back and forth is initially funny, their dynamic of course turns extremely dark in part 2 with the famous torture scene. These two are so damn good throughout these two episodes that the Tal Shiar and Obsidian Order being obliterated by the Dominion almost plays second fiddle to this relationship. But that was always one of DS9's strengths taking relationships and making them feel just as big as the fate of an entire galactic quadrant. Second from the top, we have Homefront and Paradise Lost. This was something I had been dying to see in Star Trek for years. While Gene Roddenberry forbid it in TNG, actually pulling the trigger on this kind of story took some balls. This totally goes against that utopian vision of the future Gene Roddenberry had, and many Star Trek fans insist is an immovable criteria for good Star Trek. But I've always argued showing flawed humans in Star Trek can be just as powerful, if not more so, than showing perfect humans. While most of the main cast are stuck back at the station until the Defiant goes head to head with the Lakota, Guest stars Brock Peters and Robert Foxworth as Joseph Sisko and Admiral Layton are fantastic. It goes to some dark places and has a stark warning, but ultimately it's a hopeful episode. And finally at the number one spot we have Favor the Bold and Sacrifice of Angels. Just when you thought DS9 couldn't be any more epic, the show pulls this out of the bag. Part 1 reels in with plenty of intrigue and drama, and then part 2 is almost non-stop action on a scale never before seen in Star Trek. And while we root for the heroes, it's the villains who really steal the show here. This is where the Weiyun Dukat pairing is at its best. I can never get enough of their clearly veiled hatred for one another, but mutual appetite for conquest quest and power. Honestly, ranking this at the top spot is more symbolic of the first six episodes of the season in general. The Dominion occupation of the station is one of my favourite parts of the show, and seeing all the plot and character threads come together in this extravaganza of action and drama is representative of why DS9 is my favourite Star Trek series overall. But what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my ranking? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.